In this video, I'm be going over how to create a honeycomb pattern grid for photos, just like what you see right here. And although this is opened up in Photoshop to show it, most of this is gonna be done inside Illustrator, and then the last few steps will be done inside Photoshop to actually mask these images in. Although I will show you how to do that in Illustrator as well. So first up, we're gonna start inside Illustrator. And the very first thing you might wanna do is that by default, Illustrator will often start in CMYK mode. And if you plan to use this on a website as opposed to a print item, you might wanna convert it to RGB color mode. So go to file, or if you're using a Mac, this might be under Illustrator. You wanna to go to document color mode and then just flip that from CMYK to RGB. But if you're using this for a print thing like a magazine or a brochure or something, you can keep it CMYK. So now that that part's done, we're gonna draw a hexagon to start the basic grid for the honeycomb pattern. So we're gonna go over to the rectangle tool in the toolbar, which is usually the default shape mode, and just click and hold on that. And from this menu, you wanna select polygon tool. And once that's done, we can just draw a polygon and when you're drawing the polygon you want to hold shift so that it stays nice and vertical on the bottom so it's a straight line as opposed to when you don't hold shift it might rotate a bunch and then it won't line up very well for you so just draw a polygon there and if you draw that shape and it doesn't end up being a polygon it's a different shape with a different amount of sides just select that tool and then click once on your document and under sides you just want to make sure it says six and then hit OK. And the difference if you do it this way versus the way where you just draw it yourself is if you actually click just once and then make sure it says six sides, you'll see that this side right here, I'll zoom in a little bit on the side is vertical as opposed to on this method, the side is an angle. And you actually want the side to be a perfect vertical like this because it just makes it a whole lot easier to put all these together in a row. So if you do it the first way, you just wanna select that with the selection tool, which is the black arrow. Go to one of the corners here until you get the rotate tool and then hold shift as you rotate it until you get a perfect vertical on the side like this right here. That should mean exactly two rotation clicks as you're holding down shift there. So feel free to use whichever of those two methods works the best for you and the next step you just want to repeat these and you can scale these a little bit too just make sure you hold shift as you scale it down so it maintains its proportions and you want to grab it on the left side and then hold down alt on a PC or option on a Mac and then start dragging it off to the right and as you're dragging it also hold shift so it stays on a perfect vertical and you want to keep doing that until you get this intersect line showing that these two are perfectly aligned and if for some reason this intersect line doesn't show up make sure smart guides is on which is control plus U on a PC or Command plus U on a Mac, and that's these pink lines right here. And if those are on and you still don't see this, just do your best job to get these lined up. It doesn't have to be pixel perfect, but it should be fairly close. So once you do this part, just feel free to let go and you have the first one done. But make sure it's still selected because if you leave it selected, you can then hit Control plus D on a PC or Command plus D on a Mac, which will duplicate that movement. And then you can just make a nice row of these hexagons right here and then you can feel free to scale this too if that's something you want to do to make sure it kind of fits the size you're going for so next up we're just going to hold down alt on a pc or option on a mac and then make sure also everything is selected before you do that so once everything is selected hold down alt on a pc or option on a mac click on one of these anchor points here and just drag it down until it overlaps this bottom point right here and it should kind of try to snap into place but if it doesn't once again just do your best to make sure that everything lines up and then you can feel free to go ahead and let go and then once again you can hit Control D on a PC or Command D on a Mac, and it will do that exact movement again for you, which will save you a bunch of time. It just makes stuff really easy to quickly expand upon, so that's a kind of nice shortcut there. So I'm actually gonna highlight all this too, and then I'm just gonna go over to my fill here, which is white right now. You might have a different fill color if you started with a different fill color. I'm just gonna double click on that and make that kind of any color I want to. The only reason I'm doing this is it makes it a little bit easier for me to see what's going on when it actually has a fill color versus just being white. When I go in here and remove some of these and you can also set a stroke color of your choice if you use a contrasting color that's really helpful so this one's black so that will be just fine for me so what we have here is our basic pattern where we have a grid that we can then shape to sort of look however we want it to look so in that case you can just kind of go over and start clicking and removing some of these different elements so you can kind of decide how you want your pattern to look it doesn't really matter exactly what you do I'm just gonna do this really fast here because I already have one made but this is why leaving a fill here makes it a little bit easier so that when you delete things you can tell what you actually deleted because it's white behind it where if you left it white it can be a little bit harder to actually tell what's going on there so i'm going to drag this off here because i actually have a grid sort of pre-made down at the bottom that i'll be using 
for this tutorial, but just to show you some different ways to think about this really quick, I'll go ahead and do this. So I'm gonna select everything right here so that all these different shapes I created are selected. And the white space between these shapes that you see on this pattern that I've already made is created by the stroke. So you wanna have everything selected and then also make sure your stroke window is open, which you go to window. And then from window, just make sure you have the stroke box opened, which I did not. So I'm just gonna drag it over here really quick so you can see that. So you can change the weight of the stroke by just changing the amount of points it has and make that as big as you want the white gap between your different hexagon shapes to be. So just do that to taste until it looks the way that you want it to look. And once everything is good and you think the pattern looks good to you, as well as the amount of space between these hexagon shapes looks good to you, you wanna once again highlight everything right here so it's all selected and then you want to go to object, and then you want to go to expand, and you want to expand fill and stroke, and then hit okay when you're done. And next up, what we want to use is the Pathfinder window. So I'm just going to zoom in a little bit closer here. And that's under window, and then Pathfinder, kind of like two thirds of the way down from the window menu. Once again, that's just window and then Pathfinder. And from this Pathfinder menu, there's shape modes as well as Pathfinders. And we want to use Pathfinders, and we want to use the one called Merge. And it looks like two solid squares overlapping each other, and it's the third one from the left for me. But if you highlight over these, they should tell you what they're called. So just find the one called Merge and then click it once, and then you can go ahead and either close that Pathfinder window or just move it out of the way. So what that did is it combined all of our black shapes into one shape, as well as all of our colored orange boxes into their own separate shapes, basically kind of cut them out like a cookie cutter. So if you want to get rid of this black outline, which is something you're going to want to do, you just click on your new shape right here, and then you can right click and ungroup it. And then you can just go ahead and click once on this black shape right here, which as you can tell is now a solid fill and no stroke because the merge process got rid of the stroke. And once again, just select everything, right click, ungroup, and then go ahead and click on your stroke. In this case, it's black. For you, it might be a different color. And then just hit delete or backspace to get rid of it. And now we have our basis for the mask that we're gonna be going ahead and using to create this honeycomb grid pattern. But I'm gonna use the one that I've already got created on the bottom here. So I'm just gonna delete this new one that I've created up at the top. And there's a few different ways that you can then mask your images inside of this. And the first one is inside Illustrator itself if you wanna go this method. I will say that Illustrator really doesn't like exporting really large images as well as Photoshop does. At least if you like, let's say, try to copy and paste a bunch of masked images from Illustrator into a program like Photoshop, sometimes it freaks out and actually crashes. So just be aware of that if you do choose this method. But you can either drag and drop an image into Illustrator, which in this case, these images are really big because they're from NASA and they're pretty high quality. So you can bring in your image and then just scale it down. And when you're scaling images, just like shapes, you want to hold down that shift button so it maintains its proportions. And if you don't want to drag and drop your images in, you just want to go to File. And then from File, you want to go to Place. And then from there, you can just navigate to a folder on your machine that has all of your photos in it. There's no photos in this particular folder for me, so I can't do that. But just navigate to a folder with your images, click on that image, and then hit the place button at the bottom here. And then you should be pretty good to go. So to size your photo, basically the size you want it to be, because you have to keep in mind that the hexagon right here is gonna be masking it out. So you can kind of go like this and just kind of place some around it and decide roughly how big this photo should be to fit over this hexagon. And once it's pretty close, you wanna right click on that photo, go to arrange, and then send it to back. And by sending it to back, we can then make a clipping mask using the shape for this hexagon. So what you wanna do is just select both of your image and then the hexagon you're gonna to use to mask. If you wanna do them one at a time, click the image and then hold down shift and click on that hexagon shape. And that way both will be selected without selecting any additional shapes. And then you wanna go ahead here and just right click it and make clipping mask. So as you can tell, that goes ahead and masks the image into that particular hexagon. And then you can go ahead and continue doing that for all of your different shapes. One thing to keep in mind though, is that just because you brought an image into Illustrator, it does not make that image vector. So do be mindful of that, that these images won't be vectors. So if you try to make them super huge, they will not scale like the shapes would. So I'm actually gonna undo what I did here though, just to show a different way of doing this. So we have 11 shapes right here that I've already counted, so I know how many there are. And you wanna go to your layers menu, which is right here on my screen, and just create new layers by hitting this page that says create a new layer 
when you click it until you have as many layers here as you do shapes. So as you can tell, it names it layer one through 11 on the layers menu right here, which might be really small on my screen, but just kind of keep that in mind. And what you want to do is select on the shape and put each shape into its own layer. And this just makes it really, really easy to mask stuff out in Photoshop, because then when you bring this into Photoshop, each one of these shapes will be on its own layer. So the first one will already be on this bottom layer of layer one. So we're good to go here and just try to do this in a pattern that makes sense so that the layers when they're brought into Photoshop are in the order of your shapes on the screen here. It'll make it way easier to actually understand what's going on as you go ahead and do this. So I'm going to select the next one right here and hit control X on a PC or command X on a Mac and then click on layer two here because this is the second one and then hit control F on a PC or command F on a Mac to paste in place and just keep doing this for all of the different shapes on each one of these different layers until you've done it for all of them. So I'm just hitting control plus X on a PC or command plus X on a Mac to cut and then control plus F on a PC or command plus F on a Mac to paste in place. And as it turns out, there was actually 12 shapes here, not 11. So my counting skills are not so great, but I just made another layer really quick here. So each one of these individual hexagon shapes is on its own layer. And next we can export this to a Photoshop document. So to do that, it's actually really easy. Just go to file and then go to export sort of near the bottom of the file menu. And from this menu, you want to export or save as type Photoshop. So it'll say photoshop.psd, just select that and then name it whatever you want to. I've already made this once, so I'm just going to rename this honeycombtutorial.psd and then go ahead and export that. And then there'll be a Photoshop export options and it actually gives you the option to select the color mode here. I didn't remember that it did that. So you can go ahead and just hit RGB if you're doing it for the web or CMYK if you're doing it for print. And then under options, it's really important that you select right layers and not flat image. If you do flat image, it'll just do this all on the same layer, which will kind of devalue all the work we did by making these their own layers. So just go to right layers. And then you also want to click this maximum editability right here. And I don't really worry too much about anti-aliasing or the ICC profile. I just leave those as they are. But once you got that set up and ready to go, just hit OK. And then it will go ahead and write that Photoshop file. So once that photo Photoshop file is saved, you want to open that up. So here is the file that was created inside of Illustrator, now opened up inside of Photoshop. But as you can tell here, my layers window, they might be pretty small, but each one of these different hexagons is on its own layer, which is super awesome for the masking part. So next up, we just have to bring an image into Photoshop that we want to mask out into the honeycomb pattern, bring it over top of that honeycomb, and just like an Illustrator, kind of size it appropriately. And then we can just turn on and off the visibility of that image we put here by clicking the eyeball icon in the layers menu. So in this case, it's hovering over the first one, which is layer one. I can turn that on and off so we can see that. So here's the image that is overlaid on top of that. So what you want to do is on the layer that has the hexagon that you want to mask out for your image, just click and hold control on a PC or command on a Mac and click on that layer one, the actual image thumbnail part of it, not the name. And when that is selected, you can tell it draws a selection box over that hexagon that we drew right here. And then with your photo selected, that layer selected, you want to have that selected while this selection marquee is still active. So select the photo and then from the layers menu, which if you don't see that, by the way, go to window and then layers sort of near the middle here, but that should be opened up in Photoshop by default. Just go down to the bottom where you see a shape that looks like a rectangle with a circle in the middle of it. And if you hover over that, it'll say add layer mask. So you just want to click that and it will go ahead and mask out our image right here really fast and easy. And then you can turn off the visibility of the hexagon on the bottom here because there's no reason for that to be visible anymore. So then you can go ahead and repeat that for all of your different hexagon shapes right here until they're all filled up. And another way of bringing images in to Photoshop, just like Illustrator, you go to file and then you can either do place embedded, which embeds the image inside of Photoshop or place linked, which basically pulls the image data from the folder or location of the image instead of storing it inside of Photoshop. So it might make a little bit smaller file for you by doing it that way. But if you were to delete that image, Photoshop might not be able to find it. I'm not sure exactly how it does that. It's actually never been an issue for me, but I just usually do place embedded because it's really easy. And of course, if you want to move around your image after you've brought it into Photoshop, there's a little chain link icon. It's going to be really small on my screen between the image and the mask that you created by masking out this hexagon shape right here. 
just click on that chain link icon right there and then click on your image and not the mask. You can actually move either the image or the mask depending on which one you click on. And then by just clicking and dragging on your image right here, you can move around the position of that inside the hexagon, which makes it really easy to move that image around. So if you start with a bigger image, you can have some more control as far as the actual composition of your image inside this hexagon. But once you do that for each one of these different hexagon shapes, you'll end up with a finished result just like this right here. So it's really not super hard to do and the end result looks pretty cool and also something neat about doing this sort of effect is that the actual style of the grid itself will be heavily influenced by the images you choose. So this one was all NASA images, so it looks kind of high tech or sci-fi almost. But if you did really crafty images or nature images, it would have a crafty or nature feel to it. So it's a really versatile look depending on the type of images that you throw in there. But that's it for this tutorial. I do hope you found it helpful. And if you did, please like and favorite. And if you want to see new stuff like this every week, please subscribe. I do my best to keep creating new content for illustrators and designers. Thanks for watching.